Today, we are talking about one of the biggest dilemmas, dating. <laughs> okay, now within, dating is hard enough, but here's where I'm at. Should you chase the spark, you know, the butterflies, the chemistry when you see someone, they happen in all the countless romantic comedies and all that, or should you wait for the slow burn? Well, it's the question that stopped me in my tracks. I recently read an article in The Atlantic by journalist Faith Hill. Faith is 28 years old, admits she's looking for love herself, and she spoke with romance experts from around the world and even had scientific studies on the spark versus the slow burn. The slow burn is what Aliza Ben Shalom, she's the star of Netflix's Jewish matchmaking. Shout out. She actually calls it date them till you hate them. <laughs> and that's basically just sticking with that person until you're like, dang, we're in it. Take a look. So date them till you hate them. Playful way of saying, if it's not a definite no, it's a yes for now. In Judaism, there's a concept of hishtadlut, which is my effort. So can you just kick up your feet and relax and, hey, it's no big deal and I'll just wait till everything happens. No, with the effort comes the reward. So when in doubt, go out, <laughs> date them till you hate them, give them a chance. Because if it's not a firm no, then I don't know what it is. And only by you going out can we actually figure that out. I love this. I'm obsessed. Joining the TAM fam, journalist Faith Hill and matchmaker Aliza Ben Shalom. Come on out. When I tell you I'm obsessed with this, I am married happily. Um, yeah. My, I mean, my husband and I were a, I, I hate to tell him this, honey, it was a slow burn. He, I'm just gonna get it out there. He grew on me, we kept running into each other. And when I read your article, Faith, and there is scientific, there's scientific study or science behind this idea that exposure to someone can evolve to a relationship. What was the most stunning part of this date them till you hate them concept when you were studying this? I think one thing um, that really was fascinating to me was just that it is kind of, this is like a modern conundrum that we have. Yeah. Uh, it used to be common for people to meet um, and date people that were already in their social circle. So, you know, a long time ago it was like families matching people up. Um, and then, you know, after that, like friends and acquaintances, and you'd had a, have a lot of time to get to know someone without having to sort of make a decision right away. And I appreciate the fact in your article, you reveal you yourself at the time were single. Mm -hmm. And this was, your, you were reporting as a journalist, but also a part of this journey. Lisa, then step you, because you coined the phrase, date them till you hate them, but you say people got it wrong. You don't mean it literally. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, in Judaism, we don't believe in hate at all. Well, we no, believe not hate. your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> date them till they wear you down. Let me just say that way. <laughs> no, but you're right. That they, people think there has to be that spark. There has to be that moment. Like, right now, yeah. if I don't feel it, forget about it. I'm done. Like, peace out. I don't need to be here. Right. And this slow burn, this slow grow, especially in your dating case, yeah. this, is, this is for the win. Um, this audience, majority single. Yeah, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> we poll them and we ask if they need to feel the spark on the first date in order to go on the second date. 70% of you said you need to feel the spark. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, but, but as a journalist, I mean, that comes as no surprise. We've fed a steady diet, especially in rom-coms, of someone's in the airport or they're in a train station and they see this person and boom, it's mm -hmm. supposed to be magic. Faith, in the article, the evidence that doc researcher Paul Eastwick, a psychologist at UC Davis who studies romantic compa compatibility, I love that that's someone's job, to study romantic compatibility. <laughs> he found evidence to support the slow burn, as I referenced, and, 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 mm -hmm. I, and it's called the law of... Propinquity? Propinquity. What does that <laughs> law mean? Um, it's basically the idea that uh, the more frequently you interact with someone, 
the more likely you are uh, to like them. So that's, you know, whether it's platonic or romantic, it's basically, it makes sense when you think about it, like the more time you spend with someone, they sort of become less random to you and more part of your life. Um, so the familiarity of that person, the, their ways, you, you get used right. to them versus a snap judgment. And right. I love that you pointed out in the article, and you said this a few minutes ago, society structure, even though we heavily now depend upon apps, and in my day it was nightclubs, but now it's dating apps. Um, but traditionally people were dating within their neighborhood, within their community, within their social church structure. So you were around, you know, that person maybe from Sunday school when you were age seven to now you're dating, you're 15 and 16, and right. you know them and they, you know their families. But that's really out the window the way we live today. Right, and now dating has become, for many people, often so separate from their lives. So, you know, you also have to kind of sacrifice time with friends and family in order to keep going on these dates where you're, you're almost interviewing someone for a role. It's a job, dating it's is a job, a job right. Full time. Yeah, it's a yeah. sacrifice. And you make that point in right. the article where yeah. you have to now sacrifice time with your friends, with your family, to go to the job, the side hustle of dating. With a full-time yes. stranger. With a full-time yeah, stranger. Yeah, like, I don't oh. buy into you, Who's I don't like you. you. <laughs>